This is section 1.7, linear compound and absolute value inequalities. In order to solve linear inequalities in one variable, we will need to know the properties of inequalities. So jumping right in, let's first make sure we understand that these properties are when we are working with real numbers only. They only, these properties only apply if we have real numbers. Looking at the first uh, property, we have that if x is given to be less than a, then a is greater than x. Well, you could read this backwards starting with a. You could say a is greater than x, and that's where we come up with this equality. Okay, second, if a is less than b, that's what we're given, and you notice that this inequality is a less than, if we add a constant to both sides, or if we subtract a constant from both sides, the inequality is unchanged. Now, let's take a look what happens when we multiply and divide. So here we are adding and subtracting And here, we are multiplying and dividing. And when we multiply and divide, it is when this constant is negative that we have to reverse the sign. So let's take a close look. We have a positive constant. We have a negative constant. If we start with a less than and we divide and multiply by a positive number, the inequality is unchanged. However, if this constant that we multiply or divide by is negative, then this inequality is reversed. So it used to be a less than, but now it is a greater than. So this is our very special case, multiplying and dividing by a negative constant. Of course, these apply with the uh, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or greater than. All of the properties uh, apply for those cases. Okay, jumping right in, we're going to solve these equalities, inequalities, and we are going to be writing our solution sets uh, on a number line, set builder notation, and interval notation. Starting at number one, we will distribute the three. So we will have 3x plus 12 is greater than 5x minus 8. So if we subtract 12 from both sides, we end up with 3x is greater than 5x minus 20. Now, if we subtract 5x from both sides of the inequality, we're left with a negative 2x is greater than negative 20. We do need to divide by a negative number in order to isolate the x on the left-hand side, so we will have to reverse the inequality. So we have x is less than 10. So now, writing our solution set in set builder notation, the set of all x, such that x is less than 10. Going straight to a number line, see if I can move this over just a bit, and going straight to a number line, we'll place 10, and we notice, uh, 10 on the number line, that we do not want to include, we only want the values that are less than 10. So we do not include that as an open point. And going right to um, interval notation, our left boundary is negative infinity. The comma means moving to the right. We're going to go all the way to 10, and we do not want to include it. So that is an open parenthesis. Let's see if I can move a few things up so that is not so cramped. Okay. Moving on to number two, 
we see that we have a fraction. Now, you can solve these with the fractions if you'd like, but I think it's a good idea to clear the fractions using the LCD. Now, as you can see, the LCD here is equal to 12 because we have a 4 and a 3 and a 2, and the common denominator of all of those uh, denominators is 12. However, I would go ahead and take care of the parentheses before I would clear the fractions. So we have 1 fourth x plus, and let's distribute that 2 thirds. We have 2 thirds x plus 2 is greater than or equal to x minus 1 half. Now, what did that do for us? Basically, what that did for us was now we have all terms. Here we don't have a product that we're dealing with. Now we'll take this LCD of 12 and we will multiply both sides. That means every term on both sides of the inequality. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. We have our x. 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8. Or you can just multiply 12 by 2 thirds on your own and see that that's it. Plus 24 is greater than or equal to 12x minus 6. Now, we do have some like terms to take care of. 11x plus 24 is greater than or equal to 12x minus 6. So now, let's go ahead and subtract 12x from both sides, and we end up with negative x plus 24 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Subtracting 24, we have negative x is greater than or equal to negative 30. Now we do need to divide by a negative 1 in order to isolate that x on the left-hand side. And that means we're going to have to reverse the inequality. So x is less than or equal to a positive 30. Now, we're going to go ahead and make our number line. We're going to place 30 on our number line. And we want to include 30. And we want everything less than 30. Okay? So our set builder notation is the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 30. And our interval notation is negative infinity to 30. And this time we want to use a bracket because we want to include that point. Okay, taking a look at these next two problems, um, let's see what we have. We're going to distribute this uh, 3 and 2. Okay, and you might want to make a note. Both of these are uh, special cases. Um, you could put a little star by them if you'd like just to review these. And we'll go ahead and just start uh, solving this. So we have 3x minus 9 plus 17 is less than or equal to 2x plus 8 plus x. Now, we have some like terms to go ahead and take care of first. So we have 3x plus 8 is less than or equal to 3x plus 8. And you might be thinking, well, that's strange. Well, let's go ahead and subtract 3x minus 8 from both sides. And as you can see, we have 0 is less than or equal to 0. Now, this is actually a true statement. You can also kind, uh, call this an identity, okay? So when you have a true statement, something that's true, that means every possible real number is a solution. So we would write that as the set of all x, such that x is an element of all real numbers. We can also write this in interval notation as negative infinity to infinity. And if you'd like, 
you can make a number line and show that every value on that number line makes that inequality true. Okay, taking a look at number four, as you can see, we do have some fractions. Let's clear our fractions first. We have an LCD equal to four. So we're gonna multiply the left side and the right side, all of the terms by a four. So we have four X is greater than two X plus one plus and that won't be x, that's four divided by two, so that would be a two x. Now, as you can see, we have some like terms here. So we have four x is greater than four x plus one. So subtracting four x from both sides, we end up with zero is greater than one. Well, this is false. And we actually call this a contradiction. And so there are no solutions. No value solves the original inequality. So how could you write that? The empty set, that's what we call that or the null set. Okay, let's look at some compound linear inequalities. It's really good to note that and and or are very different. And means intersection and or means union. And what do you think of when you hear union? That's right, we want to include everything. And here with and, we want to include what, they, what values they have in common. Now, if you like intersection and union, that's great, okay? So let's go ahead and begin with the or. And again, we're going to be solving these and then coming up with a number line, the set of uh, solutions on a number line, and we'll be writing our solutions in set builder and interval notation. Okay, we will solve both of these. So looking here, we're going to divide. We first have some work to do here. We're going to add three to both sides. And we will have two X is less than eight. And then we will divide both sides by two and we have X is less than four. Here, on the left, I guess I could have started there, we will divide both sides by two. So we have x is greater than five, and we have to remember that this is or. Now or means everything. We want to include the values that satisfy both of those. x is greater than five, and x is, I mean, and or x is less than four. So let's go ahead and write this in set builder notation. That is the set of all x such that x is less than four or x is greater than five. Sometimes it's nice to see that on a number line. So just get your values on the number line and then do what you did before, greater than five, less than four, and remember, or means everything. So we want all of those numbers, okay? So now let's go to interval notation and we have negative infinity going all the way to four. We don't want to include four. We want to combine that or union that with five to infinity. So that was a really, really good example, um, I think, of or or means everything. Now looking at number six, let's distribute the six first. And then let's go ahead and add 12 to both sides. And 
and, and this is still an and, and here we'll divide both sides by four. You can work it, work them one at a time, or you might be doing what I'm doing, going all over the place, whatever you'd like. Then we will subtract 10x from both sides. We will have a negative 4x is less than or equal to 12. And, so I won't forget about this and, right here, I use the different colors here. Um, that's kind of strange. Um, I think I'll um, change those just so that they match what I did above. I guess I could have just changed what I did above. But the or is here and here. And now we have this and, okay? Okay, keep going. We're going to divide both sides by a negative four. And remember, dividing by a negative, we have to reverse that sign. So right now we have x is greater than or equal to negative three and x is less than two. So what we have to do now is go ahead and write that in set builder notation, which is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative three and x is less than two. Or what we could do is notice that we will have a set of numbers uh, that we will be able to write that a little bit better with. What I'm gonna do right now is see if I can move all of this over because I'm a little bit out of room. And so um, we'll have a little room to the right. Okay, so we're gonna keep out looking out for this here. So let's make our number line. Go ahead and get your negative three and your two in the correct place. And now greater than or equal to negative three. And then we want less than two. And remember, we only want what's in common. So we really don't want this little tiny piece right there, okay? So it's really important to see that now our interval notation is negative three and include it, moving all the way to a two and we don't want to include it. So what could we write right now for our set builder notation? The set of all x such that x is between two and negative three, and we want to include negative three. Okay, now, and we call this a three-part inequality. Okay, let's begin with a three-part compound inequality. That's where x is between two values. And what is our goal? We want to isolate x in the middle region, okay? So that means getting this little x all by itself, this little y all by itself in the middle, okay? So we're just gonna chip away at it. So let's go ahead and add three to all three parts, okay? So we'll have a two is less than or equal to two x is less than eight, okay? Now we're going to divide every part by a two. Now since two is positive, we do not have to reverse our signs. One is less than or equal to x is less than four. So this makes it really nice. We have the set of all x such that x is between one and four and including one. And now with our number line, We'll go ahead and place a one and a four. We want to include one. We do not want four, and we want everything in between. Writing that in interval notation, we will include one, move all the way to the right to four, and then not include four. 
looking at number eight, we are going to leave that negative 4y term alone and subtract 1 from all parts. And as you can see, we have a negative 4 is less than negative 4y, less than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so now after we do that, we are going to have to divide every term by a negative 4 to isolate that y. So what happens when we do that? We are going to have to reverse these signs since we are dividing by a negative number. So we have 1 is greater than y is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now we need to read backwards, okay? Let's see if we can do that. See if I can bring this up just a touch so that we have room to read backwards. 1 half is less than or equal to y is less than 1. Remember, we're reading this backwards. Okay, so we have the set of all x such that 1, oops, the set of all y such that 1 half is less than or equal to y is less than 1. On our number line, you can see we'll place a 1 half and a 1, open it 1, close it a half, everything in between. Okay, so now we can write interval notation 1 half going all the way to 1 and open. Okay, now we're going to solve absolute value inequalities. And sometimes these absolute value inequalities can be tricky. Okay, so we'll just take them one step at a time. The most important thing is, is to understand that you cannot just take these absolute values off. You cannot just write x is less than 3. Okay, this will generate two inequalities or one three-part inequalities. The less than, it comes up with a three-part inequality. Okay, when we get to the greater than, we're going to generate two different inequalities for the greater than. Okay, so this is the best way to think about this. If it's greater than, you'll have two terms, two inequalities to solve. If it's less than, you will have one inequality to solve, and it's a three-part. Okay. Just for an example, what does this mean? The absolute value of x is less than 3. Using this property right here, what would you write? You would write negative 3 is less than x is less than 3 using this property. And then, as you can see, we have an open circle, an open circle, and we want everything in between, negative 3 and 3, okay? So we're going to be using this property for a less than or a less than or equal to. So the most important thing is that you have to isolate the absolute value term before using that property. So make sure you do that. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides so that we have this absolute value term all by itself there on the left-hand side of the equation. Now we're going to use this property, okay? What is in the absolute values is going in the middle. Can you see that? What is in the absolute value is going in the middle. Just follow that pattern. So we have 2x plus 5. We're going to write less than or equal to 9. And then now we're going to put another less than or equal to, and we're going to put a negative 9 on the other side. Okay? Just follow that pattern. And now we're back to where we were before. Subtract 5 from all three parts. 
So we have a negative 14 less than or equal to 2x less than or equal to 4. Okay, and now we will go ahead and divide every part by a 2. And we will have a negative 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Set builder notation, the set of all x, such that negative 7 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. We'll go straight to our number line. We'll have a negative 7 and a 2 on that number line. We want to include negative 7. We want to include 2. And we want everything in between. So we have uh, for our interval notation bracket negative 7 going all the way to 2 and another bracket. Finally, our last uh, property, and then we'll work some special cases, is if x is greater than. So again, as you can see here, now we have the absolute value of x is greater than 3. So what happens? u is greater than k. We have u is less than negative k, or u is greater than k. So we have two inequalities to solve. So how would we have done this one? We would go ahead and write x is less than a negative 3 or x is greater than 3. And that's exactly, exactly what we have. x is greater than 3 or x is less than a negative 3. And any of these numbers satisfy that inequality. Okay? So let's go ahead. Remember, we have to isolate that absolute value first. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute uh, excuse me, let's go ahead and add once. So we want to do our addition and subtraction first. So we have 5 multiplied by absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than 10. Now we're going to divide both sides by a 5. And we have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than than 2. Now we can use our property as highlighted. So what is in absolute values? We're going to write that down and we're going to write a less than the opposite of this number. And then we're just going to write what we have. 2x minus 3 is greater than 2. Okay, we're going to solve each of these. Um, we're going to add 3 to both sides. We have 2x is less than 1, and we have 2x is greater than 5. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we have x is less than a half, and we have x is greater than 5 halves. Okay, so I probably need to move this over just a tad bit. And that way we have a little bit more room for our number line. So now we will put one half and five halves on our number line. And as you can see, we want to be greater than five halves, and we want to be less than or we want to be less than one half. So now set builder notation, 
is the set of all x such that x is less than a half or, because we want everything, x is greater than 5 halves. Interval notation, um, I think I'll do that in red. We have on our number line, you can see negative infinity to a half. We do not want to include one half. Start at five halves and go to infinity. Okay. So that was had a lot to that problem, but I think if we take our time, we'll be fine with those. Now, here are some special cases. Now, you can jump right in and you can make your decision or you can work these out. So I... And when you work them out, you'll get a false uh, statement so or something that's always true. So either one of those cases. But let's go ahead and talk about this. When we have an absolute value of something, wouldn't you agree this is always positive? And aren't uh, numbers that are always positive greater than or equal to zero? So we actually have a true statement. Absolute values are always positive or zero. So this is all real numbers. And uh, when we have all real numbers, we can write our uh, set builder notation as the set of all x, such that x is an element of real numbers. Then we can also write interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. You can also have a number line and show that every number is included. And we had this same case way up here when we had this identity in number three, when we had a true statement. Okay, now what do you notice? We have a number that's always positive. Are positive numbers negative? No, positive numbers, absolute values are never negative. So they sure can't be less than. Uh, so this will never be negative. So we actually have a false statement. We call this a contradiction. And remember, when we have a contradiction, we um, have an empty set or we have a null set and there is nothing on the number line nothing. So there is no values of x that would make that true. Let's solve two application problems and conclude this very long but important section. So the pH of the water in a public swimming pool should be maintained at a safe value of 7.4. Safe swimming value. So slight variations in the tested value are acceptable, but they can be no more than 0.2. So if X represents the exact pH value, if we're going to write an absolute value, we need an inequality that represents that. We need to state that if whatever that X value is, minus 7.4 has to be less than or equal to 0.2. You could also say that 7.4 minus your actual pH value has to be less than or equal to 0.2. So your pH level minus the safe swimming value cannot be any greater than Point two. Okay. Okay. 
So now, how can we solve this inequality? Let's just go ahead and solve this one. So in order to remove those absolute values, remember we create a three-part inequality and we put the opposite of it on the left-hand side and then just keep it like that on the right-hand side. So here we will add 7.4 to all three parts and 7.4 minus 0.2 is 7.2. We've isolated that x between 7.2 and 7.6. So what can we say? We can say therefore, that's what those three dots mean, the pH may range from 7.2 to 7.6. Okay? Finally, let's look at number 14. One cell phone uh, service charges a flat rate of $35 a month plus one cents per text. Another company offers a flat monthly fee of 50 but unlimited texting. So how many texts would you need for the first company to send for the first company to charge you more per month than the second company? Well, let's go ahead and let X equal our texts per month. And let's look at company one, the first company, And let's see where that would be greater than the cost of the second company. So what did the first company say? We had $35 plus 0.1x. So point, oh, point zero 0.01x. One cent is zero 0.01x. And then the other company just said it's $50 a month. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract 0.01x from both sides. So we have 35 is greater than 50 minus, minus 0.01x. And you know what? Why don't we do this? I made a mistake there. Why don't we subtract 35? Because we'd like to keep that point. Uh, we'd like to keep that X on the left-hand side. So let's subtract 35, obviously, and we'd have 0.01X is greater than 15. Now we'll divide both sides by 0.01, and now we will have X is greater than, and you can use your calculator if you want, but 15 divided by 0 0.01 is 1,500, okay? So what would we need? What could we say? We could say that we would need to, uh, you would need to send more than 1,500 texts per month. in order uh, for the cost or the charges of the first company to be more than the second company. Okay, and um, how many per month? Yep, that's it. And that concludes this section.